morning. It is so nice to have each and every one of you here this morning. And um, uh, we're excited because it's a special day because some of you are here for the uh, baby dedication. And so it's nice to have grandmothers and grandfathers and different ones here for those that are, are being dedicated as uh, children this morning. <coughs> Um, and also, it's really nice to have some of you back that have been missing for a while. Anyway, um, I, I'm, not, I'm not looking at anybody. I, I just, you know. Anyway, so this morning, we are going to sing um, My Savior Lives. And so let's stand, and we'll sing the song. And um, one other thing I want to say is i got to find it first, so I'm going I'm to keep talking. Um, it is also, it is also, it is also <laughs> really cool, isn't it, that my husband's so cute? <laughs> no, you really are cute. <laughs> my Savior lives, let's go.
Well, good morning, one and all, and welcome to Jasper Bible Church. Ushers, if you will hand out the Ministry of Friendship books, and if you are visiting with us, we are so glad that you are, and if you will sign the Ministry of Friendship book along with everyone else, that will give us record of your attendance with us today. And once that book has gone all the way down one end, send it back the other direction, if you will, and that will help you to get better acquainted with those who are seated in your row. I've got a few cards here to share with you, one from Carol DeLong that says, I'm so blessed to have such a great church family. Thanks so much for your all your prayers and continued encouragement through cards and phone calls and visits and troubles are uh, lighter when you don't have to carry them alone. And it says, uh, you're in my prayers from Carol. Appreciate that note. And also uh, a note here uh, from the Backer family. It says the fam a family of Taylor Rab wishes to thank Jasper Bible Church for uh, the prayers and support during her uh, surgeries in Houston. And praise the Lord for his gift of healing and a uh, good update on how Taylor is doing. Also, a uh, note here from the family of, uh, of Jerry Beach says, thank you for your prayers uh, throughout Jerry's illness, and uh, he has uh, gone to be with his Heavenly Father, and uh, this is from uh, Pat and Roger Emmons, and this would be Pat Emmons' uh, brother that uh, passed away recently. Also, to um, share with you some announcements, tonight we continue our study in 2 Timothy, and we are looking at the subject, When You're Only Lonely. Did you know that you could be seated among a crowd of people and you could be young or you could be old or you could be somewhere in the middle and still feel very, very lonely? What does the Bible say about loneliness and how can we have victory through that time? That's what we're going to be looking at here this evening. For the teens down at the other end, uh, we'll be looking at the subject of um, made to make a difference and Chris Polarski will be down with the teens. And teens, I know you're excited about this. We have a BYOR party. It's bring your own rake. So when you get here tonight uh, at um, uh, 7 o'clock afterwards, we have a little section of the property where on a, uh, a neighbor lady's yard that uh, the uh, uh, stones from stone re snow removal have sort of gone over there. And I bet within 20 minutes to a half hour we can tackle that. But we need some uh, manpower and woman power or whatever, and uh, you guys are just the right people for that. So uh, bring your own rake. In fact, bring two. That way if somebody accidentally didn't bring theirs, you can give them one. So anyway, just to let you know on that, uh, classes for all ages Wednesday and uh, teens. You can head down early to hear um, uh, Fortress uh, for live music with that. Speaking of teens, grades 7 through 12, we leave here at 6 o'clock p.m. Uh, for Bedrock Miniature Golf Course. And they are going to allow us uh, for the $5 to golf uh, both of their miniature golf courses. Then we are going to go to Koala Berry for ice cream. Uh, Aaron Brown speaks great and mighty things with Koala Berry, so we're going to try that out. But uh, sign up through me if you haven't already, so we need to get an idea of transportation. Next Sunday morning, big day. Uh, for uh, grades one through six will be Promise Sunday down at the other end. And Mother's Day is next Sunday morning. Uh, guys, hint, hint, Mother's Day next Sunday morning. So just to let you know, it'll be a special gift and uh, message for each of the moms. No evening services. In fact, after tonight, no evening services for the next three uh, Sundays. Also, uh, to let you know that um, uh, Sunday, May 19th, 11.50 a.m. will be our annual meeting. The morning service will be as usual. There's like a 20-minute gap or so before the annual meeting begins. That will be followed by a potluck. Uh, for the next three Sundays, you will be seeing a sample ballot in your uh, uh, bulletin. And I need to officially go through that. It says sample ballot sheet for May 19th, 2013, 11.50 a.m. annual meeting. And vote by placing an X next to the desire nominee. All nominees are listed in alphabetical order. Under Elder, uh, it says vote for one. One name is given, that of John Fankhauser. One three-year term needed. Under Deacon, it says vote for three. Four names are given. Rex Corbin, Jerry Merlat, Mike Reno, Larry Scott. Two three-year terms needed and one two-year term needed. Uh, Deaconess, vote for two. Two names are given. Patty Arquette, Judy Long. One three-year term needed, one two-year term needed. Sunday School Superintendent, vote for one. And uh, three names are given, Chris Polarski, Gary Ruth, Grant Wood, runner up will assume assistant position, one one-year term needed, and Sunday school secretary vote for one, uh, 
Two names are given that of Brenda Craig and Julie Fankhauser. Runner up will assume assistant position, one one year term needed. Voted on by active members 18 years and over at the annual meeting. And if you're wondering, because it looks a little bit different than some years, why there's the one two year term needed under deacon and deaconess, it's because of uh, Brian and Kelly Hess who are going to be moving to South Carolina. So that's filling that vacancy that was just, uh, uh, we came upon more recently. So just to let you know on that. Otherwise, to uh, share with you, uh, be a special service on Sunday morning of May 26th, uh, featuring our Freedom Choir as we honor those past and present who have served our country in the military. And then also, open houses have begun. And uh, double check to make sure as we get closer that I'm not... Uh, uh, ac accidentally forgetting an open house, but we have one for uh, Shelby Ruth Hildreth, Hildreth and Kara Constable and Joanna Ford and Allison Hess. And you'll see that information, also the information on Light Homeschool Co-op in there as well. Uh, the Cedar Point trip, instead of Wednesday, June 26th, is actually Tuesday, June 25th. And future bulletins will show that as such. Everything else, I think, is self-explanatory uh, as well. And ushers, if you will come up for this morning's offering, and as you are doing so, just a few updates. Continue to be praying, if you will, for uh, Janet Morgan Thaler and for uh, Carol, uh, Judy, Gloria, uh, Linda Gauz, Emily uh, Hepner, uh, Lucinda Earhart, Anita Lansky, and ongoing uh, uh, cancer treatments. Um, Jennifer Babcock, this would be Steve and Rick Ford's sister has been having a rough week, and be praying, if you will, for her and for her family. Uh, also, uh, uh, Kathy Reno uh, had the uh, uh, brain tumor removed um, um, Thursday, doing well, and actually home yesterday. Dean Garwood may be coming home this afternoon. Larry Scott and Gina Helmanak recuperating at home. Uh, Bill and Phyllis Bockert both recuperating at home. Dan Van Valkenburg is up at U of M Hospital. Be praying, if you will, for him. Also, um, a friend of uh, Lois DeBacker, uh, Nancy Foster, be praying, if you will, for um, her and um, health-related needs that Nancy has, and also a, a granddaughter of Joyce Garwood, Abigail Meyer. Remember her, if you will, also. Just looking around here, because we have so many from our Sunday school hour, but uh, many of you know those as well. And We will have our prayer, and Judy will have the offertory special for us. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I do thank you for each one that's here, and I thank you for how you hear and answer our prayers. And We think of Gina and uh, Larry and uh, Kathy as they recuperate at home, and pray that Dean can make it home even later today, and that he'll continue to uh, meet his needs too. And Think of Carol, Judy, Gloria, and, uh, Jennifer and Linda, and Emily, Lucinda, and Anita, that you would bless and watch over each one and meet their physical needs. And we think too of Janet Morgan Thaler, that would be a good week of health for her too. And, with Dan in the hospital, I just pray they can get things taken care of so he can be back home soon. And for Nancy and Abigail, that you would also uh, meet their physical needs. And thank you for the good progress with uh, Taylor as well. And we think also of um, those who were mentioned during our Sunday school hour and those that, as we're praying now, that people are even thinking of at this moment. I just pray that you would meet each physical need. We think of Bill and uh, Phyllis, that you would uh, encourage them and give them a good week of health too. And Thank you for our country. Pray that uh, give wisdom and guidance to those that govern over us, that uh, you would uh, protect and encourage our military and their families as well. And thank you that many of the uh, uh, college students could be uh, back with us uh, today. And, and with uh, uh, Pastor Josh graduating yesterday and others that will be graduating this time around, I just pray that you'll just uh, bless them each need there too. I ask your blessing now on this morning's offering, thanking you for the privilege that we have to give back to you. For it's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen.
call it paradise. Someone said you can't go back home again And things will never be as good as they've been Well, I have good news for you When heaven One glimpse and you'll know the best is yet to come. And some call it heaven, I call it home. Some call it dream, oh let me dream on. Call it paradise Somewhere beyond the sky Some call it heaven I call it home Thank you, Judy. I'd like to ask the praise team if they'll come up and lead us in a couple of verses of Jesus Loves Me, be verse 1 and verse 2, as they are coming up for a moment just to mention many of you I know were here last evening with Palmetto State Quartet being our special guests, and we enjoyed having them here. And for what it's worth, you know, sometimes you have a nationally known uh, group like that that comes in, and you might think they sort of might come in sort of full of themselves. They were just really down-to-earth people to talk with as well, and it was a joy to I have him here last evening. We have uh, some special guests here this morning, and that is we have three children who are going to be dedicated. And therefore, as we sing the first two verses of uh, Jesus Loves Me, uh, you can come up. And why don't we have, you maybe have one or two over here, or one or two over here. And uh, you can come up and as we sing these two verses. So Jesus Loves Me, 479, 479. First two verses, let's stand as we sing Jesus Loves Me. As you're seated to share with you those who are going to be dedicating their children. I know we have some uh, grandparents and great-grandparents here, so uh, as I call off your name, if you'll simply stand where you're uh, seated, and that will work out well. Uh, the, the first one, all the way down to the end here, is Nolan Michael Judkins, is the son of 
of uh, Jordan and Carrie Judkins, and Nolan was born April 25th, 2012, in Bixby Medical Center in Adrian, and grandparents here today, uh, Tom and Cheryl Gillenwater, and Gary and Wanda Judkins. Good to have them here. And then also right here, we have Blake Miles Root, who is the son of Jason and Jennifer Root, and of Blake. <laughs> and he's happy to be here too, I see. That's great. <laughs> and Blake was born April 19th, 2011 at Bixby Medical Center in Adrian. And grandparents are Mike and Christine Root, and Steve and Darlene McLean. <laughs> and then over here, we have Maxton. Maxton Trace Stover is the son of Timothy and Beth Stover. Maxton was born March 28, 2013 at Bixby Medical Center in Adrian. And the grandparents here today are Rex and Debbie Corbin, and great-grandparents Ray and Mary Alice Thompson. And to share with you, you know, sometimes we will call this a a baby dedication or even a children's dedication, the truth is that these children will probably not remember this event, though uh, Blake seems to be pretty happy about it. <laughs> In fact, with these children, they did not even take the initiative to be up here today. So from that standpoint, we could even better call it a parent's dedication because what each of these parents are doing is they're saying, thank you, God, for this gift of this child that you have given to me. And I recognize the responsibility along with the privilege. And Lord, I am asking you for wisdom and guidance. And in Psalm 145 and verse 4, it says, One generation will commend your works to another. They will tell of your mighty acts. And we all as parents have the responsibility to train up our children. The best way, of course, is by example, because we can say all that we want, but obviously what we will be showing with our lives will speak louder than any words that we will ever say. But we have the responsibility to explain and teach God's word and to explain to our children about their need to receive Jesus as Savior. And then through the example of reading God's word together and attending church together, that uh, they will see that there is a wonderful, joyous life of receiving Christ and then following in his path as they follow us as we follow God. Think of it, 2,000 years ago, Joseph and Mary dedicated baby Jesus in the temple. And then 2,000 years later, we have these parents here who are saying, Lord, thank you for this gift. And we ask you, God, for wisdom and guidance. And I know that some of you will serve as nursery workers, Sunday school teachers. You'll have the privilege of helping with this as well. So let's, this time, have this prayer of dedication. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the gift of these children. Nolan, Blake, Maxton, we thank you for these parents. As they acknowledge this gift that you have given to them, and as they seek your wisdom and your guidance. Lord, I just pray that through their example and through their faithful teaching, that each of these children would have a clear presentation of the privilege of receiving Jesus as Savior, and that even at a young age, that they would make that decision. And Lord, I just pray for each grandparent, great-grandparent, those who will be Sunday school teachers, nursery workers, I just pray that you will just... Uh, uh, help each one of them as well. So the best we know how, Lord, we thank you for this gift, and we ask for your wisdom and guidance today. Lord, it's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. We have some certificates, and the first one is Nolan Michael Judkins. Blake Miles Rook. And Maxton Trey Stover. I was almost going to salute. I wasn't sure. There you go. And uh, praise team, if you'll come back up as we sing verse 3 of Jesus Loves Me. 
And thank you all so much for uh, being up here. And you are welcome to have a seat as they head down. And we'll sing verse 3 of 479, Jesus Loves Me. Hymn number 479, just the third verse of Jesus Loves Me. And we'll stand. As you're seated to share with you, every once in a while I'll think that I have a smart day. Wednesday morning was not one of those. What I decided to do, I was going to be heading up to Ann Arbor on Wednesday morning, and I had heard that my normal route from my house of going to Ann Arbor, that I would lose five minutes perhaps because when I would take Weston Road, and then take uh, Riga over to Horton and cut to 223 and then go to where the freeway is there on 23. I heard that, that, uh, that ramp where you go on to 23 North, that there's road construction, and I was not about to lose five minutes by having to do a little jog south and then north again. So I figured I'm going to try a different route. And I was not about to try the route of Ridge Highway. I tried that once. When I first uh, moved into the area 28 years ago, they said, the, the shortcut to Ann Arbor, Ridge Highway, Ridge Highway. I tried Ridge Highway. I got lost in a little town called Cone. Yes, there's a town called Cone, Michigan. I think it's on a Cone Road. And uh, no ice cream or anything. It wasn't worth being there. <laughs> so I wasn't about to make that same mistake. So what did I do? got the map, and I had it figured out. I can take Ogden up to Beecher, take Beecher to Rogers, which takes me right up to M50. Then I cut over just a little bit. There's a road called Billmeyer. Took a left on that, and then there's this main road, according to the map, main road, called Macon Road. <laughs> and I'm going to take Macon Road up to Celine. And catch this way. You know what started off pretty good? Has anyone been on Macon Road lately? You know what I'm talking about? They should call it Pothole Road. <laughs> I thought Arnold Highway was bad. Arnold Highway is like an expressway compared to Macon Road. And you couldn't go more than 10 miles per hour. Bump, 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 bump. And there's like no way to turn off from this thing. It's like too late. I'm on the wrong path and, and, and it's bad news. And so I putzied along, putzied, that's a Greek word, I putzied along uh, and finally made it to Celine. Then I got to Celine and the traffic was hideous. I've got all these cars lined up about a mile before you get onto the freeway. And I don't know what way I'm going to take ne next, but it's not Ridge, nor is it Macon Road. And whoever designed the map showing Macon Road as a principal road, uh, needs to get a new job, I think. But anyway, it got me thinking about how clever we try to be sometimes in finding our road to heaven. You know, sometimes people think if I'm baptized, if I'm a member of a church, or if because I was dedicated as a child, or if I've done more good than bad, or uh, I was brought up in church and was in a Christian family, or we think of many different roads that we think would somehow lead to heaven. Got to tell you, the Bible says there's only one road to get there, and there are many other roads that we think are clever and wise, which just aren't the case. You see, Jesus said of himself, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes into the Father except through me. The only way anyone will ever get to heaven is through Jesus and his death on the cross. 
First of all, we have to admit that we are sinners. The Bible says, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. The Bible tells us that 2,000 years ago, the reason why Jesus came to this earth was not simply to live a perfect life, which he did, but to die as a sacrifice for our sins. And then he didn't stay dead, of course, he came back to life again. And the one way of having our sins forgiven, covered under the blood, so that we can enter God's holy heaven, is through receiving Jesus' death on the cross as payment for our sins. Now here's my question. Have you made the most important decision of your life? Or like me, are you trying to be on one of those clever other roads that don't get you where you want to go? How sad it would be to be someone who regularly attended church, who was a member of a church, maybe was baptized, who is a good person in the eyes of many people, but find themselves for all eternity in a terrible place called hell. Can't even imagine it. And nor can I imagine how anyone here could put their head on the pillow at night not being absolutely sure where you're going to spend forever. It's as simple as saying, Lord, I admit that I have sinned. I believe that you died on the cross for me. And I receive you as my Savior. Won't you get that settled today? Go bow your heads, please. God knows your heart. He knows your thoughts. He knows that there are many of you who have already made that decision. It's a one-time decision as the adoption to his family. But maybe there are some that need to get that settled today. Oh, how God wants you to get that settled. If you'd like to make that decision, simply follow along with me in this prayer, similar to the one that I prayed when I received Jesus as my Savior. If you'd like to make that decision, follow along with me. Heavenly Father, I admit that I have sinned that I need to be saved. I believe that Jesus died on the cross for my sins and that he came back to life again. So I receive Jesus as my Savior so I can spend eternity with him. Lord, I thank you for this one way to heaven through Jesus Christ. And for those who just got that taken care of a moment ago, Please give him the courage to share that with me after the service this morning. Lord, it's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Praise team, we're giving you some exercise here today. Hymn number 263, A Shelter in the Time of Storm, before our main message for this morning. Hymn number 263, all four verses of A Shelter in the Time of Storm. 263. 263. Let's stand as we sing, please.
As you're seated, if you will turn in your Bibles to the first book of the Old Testament, Genesis chapter 21. First book of the Old Testament, page 18, if you are using the Bible right in front of you or if you're seated in a chair right underneath the chair. I thought this morning would be a good idea to have a message about a birth of a baby since we had a children's dedication this morning, a message entitled, Standing on the Promises. Standing on the Promises, an original title, of course, as we look at Genesis chapter 21 and the first seven verses. Follow along with me as I read this from Genesis 21, verses 1 through 7. It says this, Now the Lord was gracious to Sarah, as he had said, and the Lord did for Sarah what he had promised. Sarah became pregnant and bore a son to Abraham in his old age, at the very time God had promised him. Abraham gave the name Isaac to the son Sarah bore him. When his son Isaac was eight days old, Abraham circumcised him as God commanded him. Abraham was a hundred years old when his son Isaac was born to him. Sarah said, God has brought me laughter, and everyone who hears about this will laugh with me. And she added, who would have said to Abraham that Sarah would nurse children, yet I have borne him a son in his old age. Sarah was excited because God had promised them a son in their golden years. Now here in Genesis 21, it records the actual event of the birth of Isaac. But it was promised prior to this. So if you could picture moving Abraham and Sarah into 2013 A.D., You could picture her visiting the maternity shop, buying a few robes, one that said under construction, another one, baby aboard, another one, eating for two. She was eating for two, but no son. She planned her baby shower, remodeled the tent, Painted the room blue, and yet, no sun. She ate a few birthday cakes, blew out a lot of candles, and went through a decade of wall calendars, and yet, still, no sun. Finally, 14 years later, When Abraham is pushing a century of years and Sarah has been on Social Security for 28 years, when the nursery wallpaper has faded and when the baby furniture is several seasons outdated, God pays them a visit. Says, hey, You need to name your son, and you better name him Isaac. So, they name their son Isaac, which means laughter, or he laughs. Because in verse 6, it says, Sarah said, God has brought me laughter, and everyone who hears about this will laugh with me. 
Abraham and Sarah can't help but laugh. Partly because it's just too good to happen. And partly because they know that God would make it happen. Could you picture it? Abraham looks over at toothless Sarah, rocking there in her rocker. As fruitful as a pitted prune and just as wrinkled. Sarah wakes up, places her empty bottle of Geritol next to Abraham's empty prescription bottle of Viagra, and they laugh. They laugh. They laugh a little bit at God and a lot with God, there is celebration and there is joy because God does what otherwise would be impossible. Did you notice it was a promise that was given? Notice the verses again that they read. Now the Lord was gracious to Sarah as he had said, and the Lord did for Sarah what he had promised. You go to verse 2, at the very time God had promised him. A promise has been given. Perhaps it's you today who is waiting for the fulfillment of God's promise. Perhaps you are somewhere between prayer offered, and prayer answered. And perhaps like Abraham and Sarah were previous, perhaps you are frustrated by the fact that God has yet to answer your prayer. Perhaps you're going through difficult times. Perhaps you're going through financial difficulties, health difficulties, relational difficulties. And God has promised that he would be with you. And you have prayed that God would take care of the situation. But right now you are somewhere between prayer offered and prayer answered and you're getting increasingly frustrated. Abraham and Sarah would tell you, don't give up hope. Even if that answer seems barren right now, do not give up hope. Joseph didn't when he was in an Egyptian prison. Moses could have after nine plagues, but he didn't. Joshua didn't give up after playing Ring Around the Rosy for six days there in the town of Jericho. David didn't give up. And finally, King Saul was pushing up daisies. Daniel didn't give up hope. I'm not lying. The God who brings laughter gets a thrill out of doing the impossible for you and for me. But for some reason, there's this common thing that not only Abraham and Sarah experienced, but also that we experienced, and that is this. God never seems to be working fast enough for what we desire. God's perfect timing always seems to be running slower than our watch. But the promise that we have is that if you come to him today, you will not leave empty-handed. Either he will give to you the answer that you are seeking, or he will give you a refill in grace until the time comes for that answer to be given. Finally, the birth of Isaac. After 14 years. 
Here's my question for you. What is your Isaac today? What is that answer that you believe that you are needing from God and that you are asking for, but it just does not seem to be arriving? Here's the other question. Do you really think that God, after all these years of perfection, has made his first mistake on you and your situation when he just doesn't seem to be answering in the timetable that you're expecting? Or could it be that God knows exactly what he is doing? Grandpa Nabakan. I'm not sure if you've ever heard of him before, but he was a carpenter who had volunteered to build crates to hold clothes so that his church could send these clothes over to an orphanage in China. And when he had finished building these crates, he helped to pack these crates with, full of clothes. He then helped to load these crates on the truck that would then transport them to the shipping dock. And he was excited because he was able to serve God in this way, and he felt good about contributing to this very worthy project. On the way home, he reached for his glasses in his shirt pocket. They were gone. So he retraced that which he had done that day, and he figured no doubt when he was bending down, putting the clothes into those crates, that his glasses had fallen out of his shirt pocket and landed on top of the clothes of one of those crates. His brand new glasses were headed to China, and he barely had enough money to scrape together to get a good new set of glasses. He started complaining to God, it's not fair. I spent all of these hours building these crates and getting these packed up. And this is what happens. Several months went by. And the director of the Chinese orphanage came to speak at their church. He got up, he said, I would like to thank each one of you for the clothes that you sent to our orphanage. But most of all, I would like to thank you for the brand new pair of glasses that you sent me. You see, our orphanage had been robbed, including all of our glasses. And even if I had enough money, there was no way to get what I needed here. And I was in desperate need. I couldn't work and function without them. And we had a special time of prayer that somehow God would provide. Then your crates arrived. And lying on top of the clothes were the new glasses that you sent. I tried them on, and it's as though they were custom-made fit for me. But what I don't understand is how you as a church heard about this desperate need that I had for glasses, and how you knew the exact prescription and frame size. Of course, the congregation, they're, they're looking at each other in confusion. Because they have no idea what this missionary is talking about because they didn't send any glasses. Nobody knew what he was talking about except for one old man with tears in his eyes seated in the back row. We serve a God that knows exactly what he is doing. 
And what I want to remind you of today, you who are awaiting your Isaac, what I want to remind you of today is God is a God of perfection, and after all these years, he didn't mess up for the first time ever on you and the situation that you're going through. He knows exactly what you're facing. Even though things seem out of control, he still has things very much in control. But what we can learn from Abraham and Sarah is that God's perfect timing is usually slower than our watch is going. What is it that you're dealing with right now? Maybe it's a health issue. Maybe it's a, a job issue. Maybe it's a family issue. Maybe it's a financial problem. And it's serious. And maybe not a lot of other people know about it. And right now you are somewhere between prayer offered and prayer answered. And you're getting increasingly frustrated. And maybe what you needed to be reminded of this morning is Abraham, Sarah, and God's promise at the perfect time. May I suggest that he knows exactly what he is doing, and we just haven't caught up with him yet. You may catch up with him soon. Maybe next week you'll have the answer. Next month, next year. Or maybe like Job, you won't have the answer until you enter heaven. But one way or the other, you'll be completely satisfied and you will at that moment completely understand the delay. The question is, do we have the faith to believe that after all these years that the God of perfection has not messed up with our particular situation. I'd like to convince you that he knows what he's doing. So does that mean we quit praying? Oh no, you keep praying. And again, you will not leave him empty. Either he will give you the answer or he will give you a refill in grace. And he knows at the moment what we need most. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I do thank you for God's word. And this wonderful promise that was given to Abraham and Sarah and how you fulfilled it at exactly the right time. May we trust you in the challenges that we face this week. For it's in Jesus' name I pray. Praise team, if you will come up and lead us in the closing chorus, Wonderful, Merciful Savior. Wonderful, Merciful Savior. How about you? It's been a rough week. <laughs> you say a rough week, it's been a rough month. You say, no, it's been a rough year. In fact, you can't remember back when things were sailing smoothly. If you find yourself between prayer offered and prayer answered, remember Genesis 21. Remember Abraham and Sarah. And remember that God is faithful. And he will give you just what you need during this time. Wonderful, merciful Savior. As always, invitation is open. Let's stand as we sing, please.
Speaking of miracles, with everything that has happened in today's service, we are actually getting out at 1130. That can be a miracle in and of itself. Amen. Also to share with you, <laughs> also to share with you, um, if you happen to uh, see Pastor Josh this morning, and he, if he looks smarter, it's because a master's degree in Judaic studies can do that for a person. So congratulations to you. A reminder, tonight at 6 o'clock, when you're only lonely, and we're going to be looking at that subject, I hope that uh, you can join us for an important study. And uh, teens, BYOR, bring your own rake. You'll love it tonight. Let's remain standing for closing prayer. Heavenly Father, I do thank you for God's word, how practical it is. And Lord, I realize that there are some who are going through some very difficult times. And they're struggling because they're praying and the answer doesn't seem to be arriving. And, and Lord, this lesson may seem rather simplistic, but yet it's God's word and it's truth. So may we trust you even during the most difficult times of life and know that you keep your promises. Help us to be a good testimony for you this week. For it's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen.